Today we're going to be doing an accelerated walkthrough of this graphic featuring a couple of dance photos. Let's get into it. Down in the description I've included a few links to some of the elements used in this design. So check those out if you're interested. If you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and let me know what will be helpful in future videos. So as a general rule of thumb, I try to build my Photoshop files using layers that can be modified later. If you plan to make a lot of similar graphics like this, creating editable layers makes it easier to build new graphics on the framework of existing ones, which saves quite a bit of time. For this particular design, I began with a dark gray solid color adjustment layer. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be able to easily change this color later for a variety of different looks. On top of this solid color layer, I brought in an image of a galaxy and duplicated it to apply two different blend modes to each of them so that they could interact with the background layer that I just created. The top layer is set to linear dodge and the bottom layer's blend mode is set to screen. So now when I adjust my background color, the texture of the galaxy image layers above is preserved. Next, I dropped in the upper photo of my subject and let Photoshop remove the background. Since I already knew this composition would include two photos, I went ahead and faded the lower portion to make room. Then I pulled in that second photo, made its selection, and positioned it about where I wanted it. As you can see here, cutouts of subjects with frizzy hair tend to have harsh edges, and I try to limit this where I can. One technique that I like to employ in busier compositions is to duplicate the image of the selected subject to a group below. Then I'll deactivate the subject selection by holding shift and clicking the layer mask. Now the entire image is visible again, but this is a combination of two layers, not one. So if we place another mask on the group containing that lower layer and fill it with black to hide the elements of the group, we can come back with the brush set at about 40% and slowly paint the background image back in as desired. When this is done effectively, the image of the subject blends with the background in a way that distracts the eye from those hard edges, while still preserving the original selection above. As an added benefit, there's now space between the subject and the background to insert creative elements. Speaking of that space, the next thing I created was a triangle shape to spotlight the subject. I only wanted the stroke from the triangle, so I reduced the fill to 0% in the layer options. After converting my triangle to a smart layer to ensure a non-destructive editing process, I applied a set of fill blurs. Simply go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Fill Blur, and insert points into the layer with your desired level of blur. Also, if I go back now and toggle that copied subject layer that we made before, you can see where my subject is still selected, but the edges aren't quite as harsh. After that, I moved on to the text for the subject's name. Never underestimate the impact of a good font in a situation like this. If I had used a serif font with a classic look, it would have appeared disconnected from the more modern and futuristic tone of the rest of the graphic. When possible, I sometimes find a font that resembles the lettering featured on jerseys and uniforms or something in the same ballpark or style. In this case, I typed the name twice in two complementary fonts, one sans serif and the other script, and laid one over the other for the effect I wanted. Now this is the point where I just start playing with the addition of elements until I add something that feels like it's too much. I wish I could describe when that point is, but if you've ever created or cooked or prepared anything, you just kind of know it when you see it. I moved over to Illustrator to create a few decorative textures to fill out the negative space. I've included these stripes and star grids in various positions, which I believe complement the design nicely. These are also the elements that I made available for download in the links below. If you'd like to see how I created these, let me know and I'll do this in a future video. For an additional creative element, I wanted to add some Stardust cloud visuals. So I started with a new blank layer. You're going to need to download some brushes from the internet if you don't already have them. I used Envato Elements to get a brush pack called Grain Volume 2, knowing that grain looks a bit like Stardust. Select the desired brush from the set and go into the brush settings and set the angle jitter to a minimum of 75%. This will prevent your brush strokes from looking too uniform. Now continue to add grain in a general area until you've reached the destiny level you want. Now create a large selection that cuts through the center of that painted area, invert the selection and click the layer mask and you're all done. Now you have an element that you can copy, rotate and adjust wherever you like and it's probably a good idea to duplicate this and turn it into a smart layer to preserve its fidelity. At this point, there wasn't much left. I added a couple of light flares and called it done. 
Hopefully this walkthrough sheds some light on some creative techniques and ideas to use in your own design. If you'd like to support my channel and business and possibly help your own, this template along with a few others are available for purchase in my website store. Check out the links in the description. Until next time, peace.